Hey guys, what's up? Today we're looking at using Stokes' theorem to evaluate a surface integral of the curl. So Stokes' Stokes's theorem says, let S be an oriented piecewise smooth surface that is bounded by a simple closed piecewise smooth boundary curve C with positive orientation, based on the orientation of S actually. So the orientation of S determines what positive orientation really means. So positive orientation means walk counterclockwise along the curve and the surface should be to the left. So we'll go over that in just a second. But um, So C has positive orientation based on the orientation of S. Then let F be a vector field whose components have continuous partial derivatives on an open region in R3. That contains S. Then the line integral of C, F dot dr, is equal to the surface integral of the curl of F dot ds. So the surface integral of the curl can be simplified to a line integral or a nasty line integral over like multiple curves can be simplified to just a surface integral over the surface that's bounded by that curve. So in this example, we have uh, Stokes' theorem here and it's applied to this field F, which looks pretty nasty, honestly. This is not a friendly looking field, but um, I definitely don't want to take the curl of it. And then we apply that surface integral to the surface S, which is the cone, x equals square root of y squared plus z squared. Um, but x is bounded between 0 and 2. So that cone is our surface. And supposedly, we want to um, find the surface integral over that cone for this field. So like, how is the flux? What's the flux of the curl of this field through the surface that's the cone? So the cone is oriented with a positive x direction, meaning the normal vectors would have some kind of positive x to them. So like they would point, you know, in these different directions based on how they're coming out of the field, but, or how they're coming out of the cone, but the cone is oriented in this direction. So if we walk along the edge of the boundary curve, which in this case is this circle up here, if we lock, walk around the boundary curve, we should walk with our head in the direction of the normal vector, i.e., in this case, we should walk with our head in the direction of the positive x-axis. So if we walk in the direction of the positive x-axis, then our curve will, our surface will be on our left. So what we need to do to do that is walk counterclockwise around this circle as viewed from the direction of the normal vector. So in this case, if we go this way around the curve, if we walk this way, then our head will be in the direction of the normal vector and our surface will be to the left of where we are. So we always walk counterclockwise around the curve in the direction of where the normal vector is in the direction of our head. All right, so we finally got the curve, and the curve at this point now is the circle at x equals 2 out here. So when x equals 2, we have the cone is equal to 2. So 2 would be the square root of y squared plus z squared. So that would be a circle of radius 2. So 4 would equal y squared plus z squared. So that's basically the trace of this cone right here. So that's going to be our boundary curve. So boundary curve Why is that the boundary curve? Well, if we look through that curve, we can pretty much see the entire surface. So if I, looked, if I look at this surface through the x-axis or from the direction of the normal vector, I can see the whole surface and the boundary curve passes around the edge of that surface as I look through from the x direction, I can see the whole surface through the boundary curve. So this boundary curve is a circle of radius 2 in the plane x equals 2. So our boundary curve can be parameterized by r of t, which is going to be x equals 2. Now the circle in the yz direction, basically, of radius 2, we're going to have y as the horizontal and z as the vertical. So y is going to be 2 cosine of t, and z is going to be 2 sine of t. 
and t is going to range from 0 to 2 pi, and that will take us counterclockwise around the circle of radius 2. So it will take us the way we want to go. Now let's look at r prime of t, because we know for a line integral we're going to need r prime of t. I'm taking the surface integral of the curl, which is nasty, I definitely don't want to do that, and I'm turning it into a line integral on the boundary curve. So what is r prime of t? So r prime of t is equal to 0 comma negative 2 sine t comma 2 cosine of t. And what is f of r of t? So f of r of t would be, well, not very nice actually. So the x component is going to be tan inverse so arctan of, oh man, x squared y z squared. So x squared is 4, y is 2 cosine t, and z squared will be 4 sine squared t. Thankfully, that's going to be dot product with r prime of t, and that's going to go away. So actually, this term is actually irrelevant. Um, the second component is x squared y, which in this case will be, don't forget, x is right here, y is right here, and z is right here. So x squared will be 4, y is times 2 cosine of t. And then the last component of our field, x squared z squared, will be 4 times 4 sine squared, which will be 16 sine squared t. So, we need to take the dot product of r prime of t and f of t, and we'll get 0, and then here it's 8 times 2 is negative 2 is negative 16 sine t cosine t, and the dot product finishes off with plus 32 sine squared t cosine t. So let's write that out. So we know our integral over the curve c f dot dr is going to be integral from 0 to 2 pi f dotted with r prime of t dt, which we can say now is going to be integral from 0 to 2 pi 0 minus 16 sine t cosine t plus 32 sine squared t cosine t dt. That is our integral, and to attack this integral we're just going to use a u sub, u equals sine of t. So actually we could factor out a cosine here, so integral 0 to 2 pi, take out a cosine, so negative 16 sine t plus 32 sine squared cosine t dt. And what we're going to do is a u sub, so we're going to do u equals uh, sine t du will equal cosine t dt. And if t equals 0, u equals 0. And if t equals 2 pi, u will also be 0. Uh-huh, so that's interesting. So this is going to be the integral from 0 to 0 of negative 16u plus 32u squared du, and we know the integral from 0 to 0 is just going to be 0, so this integral, strangely enough, turns out to be 0. So actually the work done by the field is 0 even though it's not a conservative field, which happens sometimes. So this Stokes theorem problem turns out to give us an integral of 0. So again, the key is to make sure you have the surface oriented correctly, or make sure the boundary curve is oriented correctly. And that relationship is, if you are to walk around the boundary curve with your head in the direction of the normal vector, the surface should be on the left. And that's how I do it.